Welcome, everyone, to A Journey of Riches, the book series, the interview series with the authors. And I'm um, joined today by Amina McBride. She's a visionary and a woman of many talents. Um, we've collaborated on uh, one book uh, back in 2022, uh, Transform Your Wounds into Wisdom. And then we're just about to collaborate again on a book about elevating your life. Great to be speaking with you today, Amita. And you, John. Thank you. Yes. And uh, fascinating. You've, I mean, you live a very, you've lived a very, and continue to live a very colorful and diverse life. Um, you're very much um, aligned with like nature and the arts and holistic approach to living. Uh, and you're now, I mean, you've lived many different parts uh, of the US and Australia and I'm sure other parts of the world as well. And what what keeps you getting up in the morning, Amita? Uh, I would say it's my um, my fire, my spirit, the strength of my spirit, because I've it's been quite the journey, and it's just I uh, I refuse to give up. I refuse. Yeah. I I continue no matter what is happening. I hold the the frequency of being consistent. And I yeah. continue to tell myself that life is happening for me, not yes. to me. Yeah. And so by doing that, when I have things happen that are difficult or I feel myself falling, I just, I stop and I say, okay, wait, it's because I'm, I'm on this next level of self mastery. And what is this about? And, and let's get out of the, the story you know, or the, or the emotionality of it. Not that that's not very important also, but mm -hmm. to, to look at, there's a reason this is happening now. And, and <clears throat> what is it showing me, you know, and where is it, where is it leading me? And when you can do that as the observer and, and feel what you're feeling and experience it without getting lost in it, mm -hmm. um, it's very, very powerful to, um, to 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 have an expansive perspective you know more of a panoramic view mm -hmm. um of what's going on and and it can it helps tremendously when you're walking through a lot or a difficult situation or something that catches you off guard and usually when that happens it's because you are elevating your life mm -hmm. and um this is why I, I i felt so honored and i felt it was very very auspicious and synchronistic that you asked me to um, write in the book, Transform Your Wounds into Wisdom, um, because I had never written about difficult, these very difficult pieces in my life and the journey within. And, and it's, giving, it's giving you that time to be with what you need to be with. So that's the other, the other piece with me of when I get up in the morning of, of really focusing on what brings me joy mm -hmm. instead of what I think I have to do or who I think I have to be. That's our mind, you know, it'll, it'll always do that, but also what brings me joy and, and um, what lifts my spirit. And I've really been working on nurturing that and refilling in those places that emptied out, you know, where I had all the, just the responsibilities that we all have, but regrowing those places that really feed me and, and taking that time to be in nature and just looking at the magnificence of how it all works, you know, mm -hmm. the whole circle, the whole unbroken circle of, of everything that we're part of. And that's a big part of it is difficult as some things are, everything is energy. So everything just keeps transforming. And when we're left behind by those that we love, they're not gone. They've transformed. And it's harder for those of us that are here, that are still walking here, because I don't see things in a linear way. And so that also helps me um, when I get up each day to remember that, in my opinion, this, this is school. This is about mastering ourselves. This is about um, the consciousness of our soul, of being the most expansive, best version of ourselves. And if we get caught up, which I have many times, in the pain of things, we we really get off track. And the more we focus on what doesn't serve us and what makes us sad, the more of that comes in. Mm -hmm. And learning the law of attraction, because it is that, 
-hmm. And um, also as we can come through difficulties, seeing in very difficult situations, the gift in that and how maybe part of what we agreed to was to go through that to help mm -hmm. other people um, even understand why to go through it or why mm -hmm. not to give up and why to keep going and, and to see that it's not just happening for one reason and it's actually not even happening to you. Everyone mm -hmm. is having their own journey and experience, but we can take things very personally when we're hurting. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it can be hard not to, to not feel like it's a direct hit on us as individuals, you know? And often it has nothing to do with us because everybody's on their path or they're not on their path and we're all enmeshed and we're all entwined. And so being able to separate that out and take a step back and just going, okay, you know, can I, can I really see the person who, who's thinking, who's the one talking inside my head? Is that my mind? But what part of me is doing that? And what part of me is observing, you know, the soulful self versus the mind versus the parts of us that, you know, are maybe scared or trying to keep us from doing the things we really want to do for all the different reasons we come up with. So that was an expansive answer to your question, but to yeah, no, I, well, yeah, because it's, it's just, you have really re lived a life. I mean, it's, I, I feel it's very balanced life. So you have a, a balance of like really extraordinary moments and then moments where people would say, wow, that's, I don't know how you made it through that. Um, you know, one that springs to your mind is the the passing of your son, um, you know, only child and walking the Camino and that healing journey and um, that woman that, you know, you walked into this this town and she took you into this her home and she said that your son is, and she knew his name and, um, and you know, she didn't even hardly speak English. It's, it was just extraordinary, you know. Um, that you know the power of the human consciousness and spirit transcends language and yeah. uh yeah it was pretty special for you to experience and the healing and that he was with you along the whole way and um you know I can't imagine how challenging that is now for anyone to lose anyone that's close to them but particularly for women uh and children because you know you carry the child within your wound you have so many different biological connections as well um and so it was just so beautiful and courageous for you to uh, firstly to walk that journey and, and then to share it so i appreciate that and it really is an amazing uh, riveting read for people and and one that you know if you had a really tragic loss can help heal and and move in that direction to the trust um, that yeah, that everything's going to be okay and everything's in divine order. Um, as painful as you know, and unbearable, and understand that you know, maybe people will never understand the level of pain that you've been through. Um, but um, there are people that have actually had similar experiences, and that you know, you sharing your stories, reaching back and helping other people. So. Well, I I appreciate you saying that because. Um... That woman, that one example, you know, my son has reached out many times. She actually spoke no English. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. She told me the messages in Spanish, which was uh -huh. brilliant. But um, I will say I I am extremely grateful that I was born with certain gifts so I, I can access and and have that expanded awareness and connection. And that... I know helps other people to, to give them that a little lightness in their heart that it isn't, it, it, we're not just here in a linear plane that we die and it's just darkness, you know, that, mm -hmm. that would be quite terrifying. Mm -hmm. And so from a young age, I've had this profound connection. Mm -hmm. And um, so with that, being able to feel and hear my son, um, and the, the experiences, so many experiences where he would tell me things and, and then it would happen and show me things and then it would happen. And, and so that being said, um, I had, I did have something happen fairly recently, just a few months ago mm -hmm. <clears throat> where I woke up and I, I was just, it's, it doesn't, 
you don't heal from something like this, you you come back together in a different way and you learn mm -hmm. how to navigate life in a new way and you learn how to mm -hmm. navigate yourself in a new version, in a new way mm -hmm. and how to carry it. And that doesn't mean that there aren't moments where you just you just have to be by yourself, you know, and, and it takes your breath away. And so a few months ago, I woke up and I just felt so sad. You know, I just, I miss him. He's my child. And I said to the universe, I said, why did you take my son? Mm -hmm. And I heard my son very clearly. And it stunned me after all these mm -hmm. years, because it was an aha. It was, I was ready for it. I could hand, mm -hmm. I could handle it. And he said, the universe didn't take me from you. Mm -hmm. And it, might sound very simple, but it was a profound, for a long time, I thought, was I being punished? What had I done mm -hmm. to have this happen? And I had dreamt for two years, he wasn't going to make it to his 20th birthday, which was horrific to have that, those prophetic dreams. And I sat with that and that literally opened my heart and my being in a whole different way because mm -hmm. I I had thought that the universe had truly abandoned me in a way. And when I saw that, he said, it was my journey. I was not, this wasn't done to you. I wasn't taken from you. Mm -hmm. And there were, this wasn't intended to harm you. And I, and he misses me. And it's not that it's easy either. And just because someone leaves their body doesn't mean that they don't grieve that it's not difficult for them seeing mm -hmm. their loved ones there's we're always connected we're connected mm -hmm. to all things you know if if you look at all the ancient symbols and every religion and every spiritual aspect around the world there are always symbols from the mobius band to the yin yang that mm -hmm. at everything is connected there's no beginning there's no end you know it's just cycles and cycles and cycles and cycles and that does help. And it does help to, to have been able to be in a place where I'd healed the anger and the pain and, and the, the loss and the grief mm -hmm. enough to be able to hear that within myself, that mm -hmm. it wasn't done to me and it wasn't, you know, a punishment. It wasn't, that doesn't change the incredible difficulty of it, mm -hmm. but it did shift a very profound element of it. Mm -hmm. Am I making any, any sense? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, for sure. It's still painful. It's the human experience, oh, no. but yeah. also from an ex from ex expanded ex uh, perspective, that yeah, we're all one, and that you know, it's like when a baby's born, the baby thinks that's the end of its life, um, yeah. but we know that it's the beginning of the baby's life, and you know, energy. We also have proven that energy can't be destroyed. And exactly. so we are energy. And uh, so, yeah, there's a part of us that water can't wet it, fire can't burn it, uh, you know, weapons can't destroy it. And, right. uh, you yeah, know, it's that another transition. And, yeah, I, I often have communication with my dad who transitioned last year. And, uh, yeah, and he, they do feel our pain. And, um, oh, yeah. yeah, it's you know, it's just a different level of reality they, they experience yeah well and, and the other piece yeah. too that was very profound for me when i was really really seeking within myself as to why why continue you know like what mm. how do i even come back together from this mm -hmm. and one of the things that kept coming through over and over was that if I didn't continue my path, then the way my son worded it was, then we've both lost. Then uh, the, uh, the preciousness of your life, you've yeah. thrown away and there's a reason for all things. And, and you're strong enough to do this and to help a lot of other people through this difficulty to know that it's not the end, you know, that they're mm. not gone. Mm. And that's, that's very, very significant. 
Um, mm -hmm. And they've done studies that have shown that when we leave our bodies, it's um, depending on the person, if I have my numbers right, between four and seven ounces, that is a weight difference in every person when they leave and they think that's the weight of the soul when we leave. Wow. Okay, that they I didn't know that. Yes, that they can't explain. Like whatever your weight is, that there is this significant difference in ounces with each person that shifts. And they believe mm. that that's the, the soul, you know, the weight, mm. if you can put a weight on a soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, yeah. You've also um, been struck by lightning four times. Is that right? I've had lightning go through me four times, okay. which is a little bit different because um, I was on top of, of a volcanic, um, uh, in a volcanic area in Arizona, I was doing research and <clears throat> this lightning storm came in just out of the blue and there were there was no cover, there was nothing. There was one small scrubby tree right in front of me and lightning hit this tree right in front of me. Uh. And it was so deafening and it, it split the tree and it split the earth and came right to me before I could move and came up through my body. And it, it was so profound. It affected my sight. It, my entire body was shaking. I was curled in the fetal position. My teeth couldn't stop chattering. I couldn't see properly for days. My hearing, everything was off. And after that happened, I started to draw electricity towards me. If I went outside, even if there wasn't a storm, I would, it would, it would just sort of come to me. And that was very frightening. And then it happened again. And it came through my body through an open door in my house. Mm -hmm. And then the most profound time was actually in um, Costa Rica. I was on the um, Osa Peninsula and I was in a metal kayak on the ocean. And there was no storm anywhere. And all of a sudden it was witnessed seven bolts of lightning converged and went through the top of my head. So that time it did. It went wow. through the top of my head in a metal kayak on the ocean. And I somehow got to shore and they got me back to where I was staying and I lost consciousness for seven hours. Wow. And when I came to, I didn't know where I was. I, I, it took me a little while to kind of remember what was going on and there was a lot that transpired when I left. Um, and uh, so it's it's been quite extraordinary. And I, so after the fourth time, it was like my, my cellular um, polarity mm -hmm. realigned and I didn't draw it anymore. Like I felt safe hiking in the mountains and I was okay. And the, what was really incredible about this is that I directed and produced a play Mm -hmm. and uh it's called the stewards of the earth and it's about how we're all connected and um that all of our actions yeah. matter everything we yeah. do has repercussions good and bad and yeah. after the play the navajo nation medicine man came up to me and he said you're a doctor of the people and i said oh no i just played that in the play and he goes so you're a doctor of the people and he smiled and he said, I want to come out and see you. And he came out and saw me and I had told him nothing. And he said, the thunder beings have blessed you. Lightning has gone through you four times. And he could see that. And I hadn't wow. told him. Anything. Yeah, that's and awesome. So the reason that was amazing is it also happened in Peru. I had a Quechua elder that also saw it. And okay. he said, he said, it's, it's tied. We all have a path. We all have something we're chosen for. And he said, it's about what you're here to do. And if you keep, if you keep contracting yourself and not letting yourself be who you are, that's what draws in physical pain and, and causes harm in a body. So I'm tying this into my son because when we walk through things that are difficult, we tend to contract. And mm. when we contract, we shut down our energy flow through our system you know, through the earth and the heavens. And that's, that can make us sick because, you know, we're contracted. We're not, we won't, we're not expanded. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's so very important to let our emotions and feelings move through us. And it took me time to really understand this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it gets stuck in our bodies and then we go into dis-ease and all of these other imbalances. So it's amazing how it's all tied in with the Amazon plants and, and the healing and, 
the gifts that I was born with. And I know that it's all, all part of this mosaic that I've seen with my son of why he helps me from where he is. And, and the fact that I, I have been courageous enough to stay and continue and, and really recultivate that love within myself. And, and I don't hold bitterness or anger. I I have sadness Mm -hmm. at times greater than other times, but I, I, my strength is, has, has um, returned greatly because I want to honor him and I want to honor my path and I want to honor the purpose that's unfolding. Otherwise, mm-hmm. otherwise it wins mm-hmm. and you can't, you can't let that win. Love yeah. has to prevail, right? Mm-hmm. Right. hundred percent. It has, it has to. to. Yeah. 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 And you uh, we were talking earlier that you've just set up um, some beehives. So yeah. you're, Yeah. Yes, I, I have always been very profoundly connected to the earth and uh-huh. nature and wildlife. And uh-huh. so I have gardens and the bees and, and um, the trees on the property here are just so very healthy. And so I'm always blessing the land and, and I send that blessing out across the world because I do truly believe that our intentions and how we carry ourselves and and that we, to to give that to all yes. life, remember that there's enough for every living thing. And, and sometimes we can get scared and think there's not enough. There's not enough. And we go into that lack consciousness. Mm-hmm. And then we have experiences that will then prove that to us. Mm-hmm. You know, if we if we truly believe life's just pain, we're going to have experiences that prove that that life's just pain. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so if we believe that there's enough for everyone, and if we believe that we're worthy and deserving, not because yeah. we're so absorbed, but because I guess what I'll say it this way. It also has taken me a long time to heal certain things within myself, even before mm-hmm. my son, mm-hmm. where I, I never really believed I was truly worthy enough or deserving mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. good enough. And that came from things I believe I had agreed to on a soul level for my evolution to learn and to heal those those gaps within myself mm-hmm. and to realize also that's not egotistical. Mm-hmm. If you truly love yourself and you believe you're worthy and you're deserving and that your job is to fulfill your purpose here. And mm-hmm. if you don't fulfill it, that's being selfish mm-hmm. and egotistical because you're keeping it from the world and we all have a, a piece to play Uh, we know we're all part of the whole every living thing is so it's a different again it's a perspective switch that if just shut down and you don't bring your gifts to the world then how are you honoring however whatever you believe in let's just say the divine or the universe or as the lakota would say wonkan tanka if you don't honor that and what you are here to bring then you're not honoring yourself and you're not you're not happy, but you're also not bringing forward to the world and to other people what you're here to bring. And then they can't share with you what they're here to bring. And there's enough there that you can choose misery, any direction you choose, you know, but life is precious and fleeting. And none of us Mm -hmm. knows how much time we have unless you've dreamed it or been shown it. And so all we really do have is time and what we're going to do with it. Because I heard something a few days ago that I just love that Keanu Reeves said, and he said, none of us is getting out of this life alive. And I thought that was fantastic because it's true. None of us get out, gets out alive. And he's like, so, so live it. Yeah. Really live it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it that way, even if you're carrying hurt and difficult things you've been through, that's even more amazing because you know, when your time is up, that you did it and you gave it everything you've got. So that's where I am now. It's like, doesn't mean I don't hurt. It doesn't mean it's not hard, but I have had so many people say, usually when I least expect it, they've said, you, you have helped me so much. You inspire me so much. When I think things are hard, I think about what you've walked and, and how you keep creating beauty and you, you want to bring goodness. And they said, and it, and it makes such a difference because 
they're like, no, I'm not going to focus on the things that hurt those. It doesn't define you. The things that happen to us happen to us, but it's not who you are. There's a very big difference. And I think a lot of times we attach to experiences and events that have happened in our lives. And we think that's who we are. These are things that we've lived through and we've experienced, but it's not who you are. There's a very, very important difference there. And especially when we've gone through things from a young age, you know, we try to make sense of it. And so we create very limiting beliefs around who we think we are, how we should handle things, or if it will sabotage ourselves right before having this great success with something we're excited about because maybe we're scared or something that happened when we were five and, oh no, it's not safe to do that. It's not safe to be seen in the world. These are pieces I've, I've walked through and really unraveled where mm -hmm. it came from and it's it's very empowering and it's it's profound to mm -hmm. to see the human part of us and how we create these belief systems and these platforms and these patterns mm -hmm. that um they only serve us in terms of showing us how powerful we really are in terms of we're how all... we project this movie of our life right we're all 100 and so do yeah. you do you do you st do you still go for long walks and, and walk in nature? You know, after the profound experiences that you, what well, it took you like two months to walk the Camino. I it took me eight weeks, and I eight walked weeks, it yes. going into the winter. Yeah, I hike almost every day. So yeah. I had a I had a three mile hike today. I okay. hiked in the rain yesterday. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I hike every day. It's very it's very grounding for me and. Yeah. Um, it's how I just allow myself to just sort of, if you will, like sort of just wash things out and just yeah. be, and I like to be very quiet when I walk, yeah. you know, there's no sound and just, just being, and yeah. that to me, that's a critical way to just, to just get your balance back mm -hmm. with how huge the world is, how expansive it is. We can get really, really kind of locked in on, you know, what we have to do or, you know, the, our day you know, and then we can forget of, you know, what's truly, truly important. And yeah, true. sometimes we, we, we are our own worst enemies, you know, we're the ones that put the chains around ourselves. And if, if something's not working for us, we can change it, but we yes. have to get time to unfold. I think sometimes we're impatient, you know, and we want something to happen now and it doesn't, always work like that that's one of the reasons why I'm a gardener and I grow things because I love watching the process you know a flower doesn't sit there and tell itself open already bloom you know it it, it knows when to do it and and it's doing all this underground before it even comes up it's doing all these amazing transformative processes and that's that's what we do and if we don't give ourselves the time and take care of ourselves well, if you don't water your garden and if it doesn't have the right soil and sun, the seeds aren't going to come up. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it is a very powerful analogy because I I watch, you know, how things grow and our intention is everything. And our mm -hmm. thoughts affect our well-being. And I've walked through all of these pieces. I've walked through being so down and so sad and feeling like the incredible shift within my well-being. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the only other thing I would say with that is a lot of times I feel in society, we're taught that it's not okay to be sad or you, people say, how are you? And you're like, I'm good, you know, and that's, and you're not. And it's, we have to have all of our emotions and to just really honor yourself with what you're feeling allows it to move through. Mm, right. You know, and, and we make it harder than it is. And it doesn't mean it's not going to come back through, but it's not going to be quite as hard mm -hmm. if you if we let it move through. And yeah. these are these are important, important um pieces for our well-being and and part of our human experience, like you said, it's, it's very artificial to think that we're supposed to just be joyful and happy all the time. That's not realistic, you know? Yeah, of course, of course. And <laughs> I feel there's a, a huge awakening to that as well. Yes. Yeah, so walking is very powerful and it's, 
served you on your journey and still does. Um, how do you specifically work with people to transform their their wounds into their their goodness? Uh, I I feel um, it depends what somebody wants to do. So working with the quantum field, if somebody doesn't want to talk about something that's going on mm -hmm. and they're hurting, working with the quantum field, I thought that other people could see the strands in the field. Um, mm. Working with the quantum field, it's everything. It's what's around yeah. us. Yeah. You know, it's, and it, the fact that it combines all things, energy, vibration, and light, those three components, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's, it's sentient. It already, it already knows, you know, that's mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is our feedback. So yeah. being like a, like a mirror that reflects it. Yeah. So I also really like the fact that it doesn't go through me. So if, if somebody just wants to do some work and they don't want to talk about what's going on, they don't have to, because you can do quantum light work and let it work in on the DNA level with where yeah. they need to have healing. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody wants to do intuitive work with maybe they're truly stuck and they, they're not seeing the blind spot and they truly mm -hmm. do want to heal, they don't yeah. want it to just go away. They really do want to do what's required. And yeah. they just, it's for all of us, every single one of us. When you're so deeply enmeshed in something, it can be very challenging at times to step out of that yeah. and see another perspective and it can be very mm -hmm. helpful to have someone you trust or a friend say this is how i see it you know um if it's asked you know and so in that in that regard um being able to use that intuitive guidance um i've worked with people over the years where i've been able to see illness and um I've been able to see the origination of it when, okay. nice. so an, a really good example is many years ago, because I'm not giving a name, I'm not violating any trust. I had a man come see me and he was in fourth stage cancer mm -hmm. and I wished he had not waited quite as long before yeah. he came, but he had, his words were, this is a, this is a really beautiful example. His words were, I've tried everything mm -hmm. and he wasn't sure if he believed in this kind of work. So he had mm -hmm. done the medical approach and he had done this and he said, I've tried everything. And he sat down and, and he had told me he had cancer and he was about to tell me where and what it was. And I said, no, please don't do that mm -hmm. because you'll, you'll confuse me. And a lot of times I've learned that where we think the problem is, is often the smoke and not mm -hmm. the fire. Because right. Symptoms for, you know, for all of us. We were yeah. so focused on, oh my gosh, this is driving me nuts. And that's not right. really, right? right? And so I looked at this man and I said, it's right there in your chest, right here. And I could see this black circle. And I said, it's blah, blah, blah. And he looked at me and he just started crying. And he said, I've tried everything. And, and this is very personal. And I'm feeling emotion right now because he said, I don't want to die. Yeah. And he said, he said, can you heal me? And I said, my belief is we're all here to help each other. And mm -hmm. if somebody says they can heal you, I would, I would leave very quickly because we're, we all have to do our work on our journey, but we can help each other on that right. journey. Right, of course. And I said, I can tell you what I see. And so I saw all these images Mm -hmm. And it was extraordinary. And it was a very specific event in his life. And I said, at this time, this happened. And I'm just going to say with a family member to keep it very discreet. And I described what I saw, where it was, what time, yeah. exactly what happened. And he, he said, I have never told anybody that. And I wow. said, that's the origin of the cancer. Yeah. And I said, if you don't make peace with this person, yeah, I don't know what the outcome will be. And we did healing work and we talked about that. And he said he would do it. And he said, could you tell me if I'm going to live? And I said, I never asked that. That's not my place. That's too much for me to carry. And that's yeah. not my business. So since you're asking me, how do I help people? I help by giving all that I'm allowed to give. Mm -hmm. And I give in many different capacities. Yeah. And if I'm allowed to see something like that, it is a huge honor. Yeah. And 
And then it's up to that individual to then take that. And it's also based on, is somebody complete with their life journey or mm -hmm. was this part of their journey for them to then be here for another 10 or 20 years and have an expanded life and help all the people in their, in their world expand. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, there's a domino effect. Yeah, it's awesome, the work that you're doing. It kind of reminds me of the work of Caroline Mace. Yes. With, uh, yeah. yeah, the intuitive, and she can pinpoint it to the exact uh, yeah. Yeah, beginning of the, the trauma, the illness, the disease. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty special. So it's awesome that you've developed or, yeah, that skill set. I guess you are born with it to a degree, maybe. Yeah, no, I, was, so, I was definitely born with it. And, and yeah. there's... The, the, the other pieces really are just, um, I haven't done this in a while because of my son. I stepped uh, away. Yeah. But I, for many, many years, I I could hear people's loved ones that would give me mm. messages for them. And oh. it was it was in such detail. And I didn't know these people. And th well, this actually happened last year with a couple of people. It was unexpected. I was sitting with someone not realizing they were sad over mm -hmm. a loss. And mm -hmm. this person came in and I didn't know who they were. And then I got all this information and I said, there's a somebody and I just started talking and I didn't know how they were going to take it or think that I was maybe, you know, didn't have all my Thank faculties. You. Right. Right? Okay. right. But I started giving such specific information. And I said, this person right. is Terry. They're this age. They're saying this, this, this. And the person looked at me and just came apart and said oh my god that's my father and the detail was incredible i couldn't have known any of this so it's like it's that amazing. yeah yeah that's really cool that's yeah. really cool and yeah. um what's uh what's next for you um well writing i i'm uh -huh. working on a book about glacier national park a true story yeah I also, I did also very recently receive a very exciting email saying that my first book mm -hmm. was chosen to um, go to a way, the Wales Film Festival to mm -hmm. be judged. I have to turn it into a screenplay and create a okay. storyboard and it could actually be chosen for possible yeah. film acquisition. Oh, that's great. Oh, congratulations. Well, I'll see what that's happens. Nice. I don't know, but I'm very excited about it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. And what do you hope readers glean from your chapter um, from Transform Your Wounds into Wisdom? I, if you ask me the most, if you're asking me the most important thing that I hope that they, they take from it is yeah. to not give up no matter mm. what and yeah. i feel i feel a lot of emotion saying that yeah you weren't I, to quit. well not just that but i will i will remind you that i i did actually die after my son of a broken heart i did die and i left oh, my I body oh. oh i did die and and i heard a resounding no and i was pushed back into my body and my heart wow. restarted i started wow. gasping Prayer, and I was told no so there is a plan and yeah. I did not take my own life I, I literally my heart stopped the pain was so overwhelming yeah. and I I was sent back mm. and um so my the most important thing is is do not give up and mm. do not feel that that you're to blame for where someone else's journey is going and and to know that we are not in a linear world it is, right. it is dimensional and it's it 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 doesn't end it just changes and yeah. and there's a reason and to to let yourself feel everything you're feeling and in doing that you'll be able to sense and feel your loved ones and to know that you can learn those gifts. You, we all yes. have them. You, it, yes. it's a muscle you have to exercise. Right. Learn to meditate. Learn to breathe. Learn to be quiet. Learn to center, and yeah. and quiet your mind. And yeah. when you shift those frequencies within your your being, you can you can have 
the the peace and the understanding and the knowing that everything is unfolding for a reason and it doesn't mean it's not hard it doesn't mean it's not difficult yeah. but it is it is all about mastering ourselves and our evolution yeah. and, and to be able to to um walk within levels of strength we didn't even know we had it doesn't make any of that okay for the human mm. part of us i'm not I have to walk with this every day. Um, but it is also very comforting for me yeah. to be able to feel my son and know that he's doing he is doing amazing work. He's he is doing incredible things from where he is. So it's not yeah. like he's not working. He's he's yeah. bringing light and goodness to many. And yeah, that's awesome. If I wasn't born with these gifts, I guess the other thing I would say here is I, I have never promoted myself. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I, it's always been word of mouth yeah. and for most of my life. And, and this is a very important, this is very personal, but for most of my life, I pushed it away and okay. um, it was elders and, and, and um, different people, holy people that kept telling me, you have to stop, you have to stop um, fighting who you are because you're disrespecting the universe and the divine by the fact that you were given these gifts for a reason. And that, mm -hmm. that shocked me too, because I hadn't mm -hmm. seen it that way. Yeah. I just didn't want people to say, Oh, well, you know, you're one of those strange ones or you're this. And it was like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm just being who I am. And mm. I'm, I'm not promoting anything. If somebody finds me or says, I just feel like I, I could talk to you, then there's a reason, you know, mm -hmm. And so that's why I wrote this chapter, The Journey Within. I had never written about my son. I had never written about these pieces. It was a very personal and vulnerable piece for me to write and also very healing and very empowering. And that's what I want people to, to see is that true courage, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is being able to be vulnerable and be real with where you are and yeah. not not pretend that you're not feeling anything and that you're fine <laughs> that's a big one that's a big one well yeah i appreciate uh yeah your time and energy and um looks like it's finally getting dark where you are now so well, it, it's a little in bit the darker. House it is. i don't have lights on but it's still pretty bright outside if you're outside oh, is it? okay yeah it's pretty yeah. amazing so you're in montana and yeah. you're running retreats and you've just finished building a yerk and so you're going to start having like um yeah. different types of retreats and he healing ceremonies so that's pretty yeah. amazing how can people get in touch with you if they want to they're in montana they want to go to a retreat they want to work with you um how, how do they go about that um they could um go through my website i have a okay, private cool. contact page it only comes okay. to me okay um should i give you my website uh, well, yeah, you can share it. We'll also share the links below as well. So, yeah. You can do it like that. Okay. It's, um, yep. But I guess I'll say that um, uh, my website is Rides with Fire, and it actually yep. is my to Indian medicine name that was gifted to me. Rideswithfire.com. Okay. Yeah. And so that actually ties this all together is because my Lakota elder said, um, you are she who rides with fire and you're here to transmute great difficulties through the fire wow. to help other people learn how to, how to do that and, and why do it. And, you know, and the Phoenix, you know, the, mm -hmm. that honing of ourselves over and over and to, I guess the last thing I'll say is all throughout this whole process of my journey I realized that each day we're beginning again mm -hmm. and, and to not be so hard on ourselves. I, I lived a life where I, I just, I could never be enough no matter what I did, no matter what I accomplished. And I thought I had to really look at where that was coming from. Mm -hmm. And so I've really, I guess I would say I used to be a triple A personality and now I'm like a B plus. It feels a lot better. <laughs> and so a little bit more chilled. Yeah. But it's, it's remember, you know, we're always beginning again and again, and it's not to judge when we judge ourselves, we judge others. And when we can let go of the judgment and the yeah. criticism and look yeah, at criticism, yeah, 
oh, we're all doing the best we can in every yeah. moment. So yeah. it doesn't serve us to go to look back and go, why didn't I do this this way? Because mm -hmm. you're forgetting all the the circumstances that were happening at the time and why yeah. you chose what you did. It doesn't yeah. serve us. You have right now, and yeah. and forward from where you are right now, and yeah. to 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 just start again and start again and start yeah. again. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I love that. I think that's sage advice. That you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, yeah, live live for others. Uh, you also, you know, obviously put yourself first and do what you need to do. If, you know, hiking's a go to for you, and if you've got a gift, share it. Don't suppress your talents and push it away. And uh, yeah, otherwise you'll manifest. You know, elements in the body and things like that. Yeah. And um. But yeah, I'm excited uh, to see you know more photos and hear more exciting journeys of people going through transformational work, you know your new your new property and your new venue. And so um, I know that you're going to attract you know incredible souls from around the world. So. Well, thank you so much, John. You've been so kind. It's such a gift to know you yeah, and to likewise. work with you. And it's it's just such a tremendous honor. And I feel that yeah. emotion again. And you yeah. just said one thing that has taken me a very yeah. long time to understand when I used to hear people say, take care of yourself first, love yourself first. Right. And I, for years, I thought that's so selfish. Yeah. That's so, that's so egotistical because I didn't really understand it. It was coming from a limited perspective of something right. I had learned as a child. And right. now I understand that if you don't take care of yourself and love yourself first, not in an egotistical way, in an honoring way, you yeah. have nothing to give anyone else. So yeah. you're no good to anyone, including yourself. And when yeah. I understood in that way, it, it just changed my whole perspective on what that means. And so I guess for anyone that's struggled with that as well, um, well, I think it's harder for women as well, you know, it's, it's that innate, you know, nurturing, motherly aspect that you would just want to be all things to everyone and especially, you know, those near and dearest to you. So, uh, yeah, I feel that that's a little bit harder for, for women um, because I guess naturally, biologically, you don't even have to think about it. You're feeding, you know, the child within the wound and, and things like yeah. that. So biologically, you're geared that way, you know what I mean? So, um, oh, I do. Yeah. I could tell you that when I would have my 15 minutes to myself to have yeah. a bath, the cat's yeah. paw would be under the bathroom door, the okay. child, the, my little boy would be at the door, mama, mm -hmm. mama, mama, mama. But as soon as you're not having that time for yourself, they're playing and they're happy. It's just as soon as you close that door, it's like that energetic of 15 minutes for yourself, you know everybody comes to you so you're right it is it's like that yeah. that energetic nurturing so yeah but it's, all, it's also about being it's awesome able to that you can give that season. you know when you when to yeah. to to laugh more and to play more yeah and i have to say it feels good that i've started to be able to do that again nice. and so you said for what people could take away do something you've never done before. Like I've yeah. just started two months ago. I just started learning the guitar oh, that's and I've, awesome. just, I've just started voice lessons. I never thought I would ever do that. And right. it's, it's wonderful because it's something so different. I don't have any reference point of anything that can touch that or judge it or crush it or, right. or anything. And it's just yeah. fun and it's joyful. Yeah. yeah. And, that's very important too, because it balances out yeah. the parts of us that are hurting and processing yeah. healing. Mm -hmm. So that's the other reason I do say that it's actually very, very important to mm -hmm. do something that you've never done before that you can't, mm -hmm. you can't judge it. There's nothing from the past that can affect it. And um, it's, it's profoundly healing for your being to do that. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great to chat with you. And uh, wow. yeah, we'll, we'll leave the link to your website. Also link to to uh, uh, our book and uh, also your book is going to be uh, turned into a movie. And so people can connect with you and, and really, uh, yeah, I mean, you're an incredible human being and 
um, be great to see you, you know, serve more people and, um, and yeah, it's just, think, yeah, just awesome to be chatting with you. So I appreciate you, Amita. So. I appreciate, appreciate you too, John. And you're, you're a beautiful person and I feel so deeply honored to have met you and, yeah. uh, be connected with you and be developing this friendship with you. Yeah. And, uh, it's just, it's been a, you're a huge gift in my life and thank you. Thank you for letting me be part of this beautiful, beautiful series that you've created that helps so many. And, um, it just, it's just, it's an honor. It's, it's wonderful. So thank you so much for this interview. Yeah. And I'm wishing yeah, feelings you mutual feelings, mutual. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, you're, yeah, you're welcome. And I appreciate you as well. And of course, if you'd like to get more of these interviews, uh, you can subscribe and we'll make sure uh, we'll send them your way. That sounds wonderful. Thank you, John.